and welcome to Chelsea Classics. See some of the club's greatest players and finest moments in this unique collection from the past 40 years. John Hollins was the Chelsea skipper as they took on London rivals Crystal Palace in April 1972 in front of 34,000 fans. Brian Moore is the commentator. So Crystal Palace kick off, defending the goal to our right on an afternoon of vital importance for their survival in the first division. Facing a Chelsea side in form and also facing a very strong breeze indeed. Hudson now for Chelsea. Mulligan. And a free kick to Chelsea, given against Tony Taylor. And that is the size of the breeze here this afternoon. It really is behind Chelsea. Now their new skipper, John Hollins. Towards Webb, and that fractionally went over Webb's head. Not much to choose there. Tambly. Winning it well in the air. Wallace, Craven. Chelsea at the moment looking a little lethargic. And here's Goodwin now for Palace. Across there towards Craven. And straight into the arms of Bonetti. Really a possession with a header that to have made it count a good deal more than that one would have thought. But certainly that should give encouragement to Palace. But in fact, it's uh, Chelsea coming away until they're stopped by Peter Wall. Kellard. Taylor's gone on, sprinting ahead of Bobby Kellard. Kellard going his own way. The little chip through there to try and find uh, Taylor. And now Blythe. But a bad ball by Blythe, not uh, going anywhere near Sammy Cooper, Sammy Goodwin. Mel Blythe, staunch and solid defender at the back with McCormick. Webb's header, and a good one to win. Hollins right up there too. Oscar racing through, and Jackson out. And now Hollins with a chance, and McCormick scrambling it away. Cook putting it back in again. Down goes Hollins, Webb turning on it, and Jackson retrieving. Well, the first real bit of excitement in the first 18 minutes or so, and in all honesty, the first real danger for Crystal Palace. Jackson came out so bravely. Courageous goalkeeper. May well have hurt his hand there. But now Hudson. Blythe getting it away. Harris. Mulligan. Garland. Strong tackle there. And a tackle from behind, but he took the ball that I would have thought followed through a bit, Peter Wall, there on Chris Garland. As they say, letting him know he's there. Kellard. Leaving it for Wall. And Wall's route back to Jackson is blocked by Garland. And he's forced to give away the corner. No, it's a goal kick. Nobody under more pressure, of course, these days than manager Bert Head on the left in that uh, bench there. Taylor Willie Wallace Taylor right in there can he get it on the left foot he can just over turned well on it Taylor if only he could have kept it down say all the Palace fans it's some very good work over on the right by Willie Wallace clearly a class player after all those years with Celtic and so Chelsea now with the goal kick with Peter Bonetti. Osgood. Webb. Wall versus Garland and uh, Peter Wall winning it for Palace. Collins. Garland losing it to Kellogg. Not handball, says the referee. Taken on his chest by Tamley. But Cook now. And McCormick going in. And Hudson going in a little, a little late on Taylor. Just 
just having a cautionary word from the referee to calm down a little. And it's going to be Mel Blythe once more with the free kick for Palace. Craven nodding it on, Wallace right in there. Craven, oh, and it needs a good save. That needed a good save from John Craven. And Benetti was the man who was equal to it. So two good and promising little bursts there by Crystal Palace. And here's the corner with Willie Wallace. Craven again, winning a lot of good balls in the air. Boyle getting that one away. Harris. And now Harris a free kick given against him, the feet were high and a free kick taken from the wrong place Harris complaining I suppose that that loses all the advantage that Chelsea might have had but two quite promising breaks there by Crystal Palace and Willie Wallace was involved quite considerably in both of them Blyde having difficulty judging it to in the breeze. A fly hack away by John Jackson. The Palace at the moment playing it cautiously and sensibly. And once or twice making really quite promising breaks. It really is going according to plan so far as they are concerned. Cook to Dempsey. Garland going in on this one, getting ahead to it and straining the arms of Jackson. But he judged it well. A lot of room down the left if Craven can keep it in and Dempsey is steaming across. So Craven leaving the ball to Bobby Tambling. Wall. Lies, pumped high, Dempsey getting underneath it, Craven right in there again, and Craven again! Oh, just wide! And he really has had a disruptive influence on that Chelsea defence in the air, John Craven. John Boyle with a throw for Chelsea. Free kick now to Chelsea. Looks like it'll be Hudson to take it, Hudson or Boyle. Indeed it's going to be Hudson, curling one in towards that Crystal Palace goal as we come towards half-time. Webb down, Osgood there. And back now for Cook to hit one, and just past the Palace post. As Jackson went sprawling across, Cook shot with the outside of the boot. And in fact, Jackson must have just got a touch to it. The last few seconds of the first half, just a little injury time to go on top of that. And the Palace defence under pressure now. Cook with the corner. McCormick winning it in the air, and Wallace to belt it away. Boyle. Jump for that, he says, and uh, it eludes them all. Then Osgood, but the whistle had gone for a foul by Crystal Palace. Free kick to Chelsea. Again, these dying seconds of the first half. But Palace have fought very well in the middle of the field and at the back and made these one or two very promising threats. So that's Jackson's view. Hollins jumping over it. Hudson chipping it. Hollins going on. And McCormick nodding it sideways, but only as far as Osgood turning it back again. And Jackson, no! No, a close! And Collins who finally puts it in! It's Collins who finally puts it in! On the very stroke of half time, Jackson just failed to get to it. And it bobbled about there. It off the post. And Hollins to ram it in. Johnny Hollins puts Chelsea ahead, a lead they scarcely deserve at this stage, and certainly in that situation, none of the luck going Palace's way. Hollins 
his 18th goal of the season. And a real hammer blow there for Crystal Palace. Kellard. And now where? As the whistle goes for half time. And Palace. A real blow in the last minute of the first half with that goal by Johnny Hollins. After Palace had showed a lot of good qualities in defence in the middle of the field and one or two useful breaks. It's a tremendous strike. Hold on. Is that Delhi? Playing in the ashes. Delhi, what are you doing out here, mate? Stick to football. What do you wish for in the future? Me gustaría que los niños tuvieran casa. Si con ella no me hagas, I wish for children to have food and water. If you wish for a future where children are protected, can learn, and have a reason to smile, will you consider leaving a gift to save the children in your will? I wish that children around the world could have medicine. Unda kumasomo, akisajja kuandika. When you write your will, after you've provided for your loved ones, please leave a gift to save the children and the values you hold dear can live on. You can help children grow up safe, healthy and happy and you can be remembered in a child's smile. Call 0800 055 7800 to speak with a friendly member of our team or visit savethechildren.org.uk forward slash smile. Tuck into a framing sim deal for just £21 a month. It's seasoned with 20 gigabytes of data. Served with unlimited texts and a side of bottomless minutes. Grab this mouth-watering sim deal for just £21. Tasty. To get our new £21 SIM deal, search O2 SIM only. O2. More for you. Enoch is going blind. But this two-year-old boy isn't just losing his sight. He's losing his future. Soon, Enoch won't be able to see his family or play with his friends. He won't be able to go to school. In the world's poorest countries, as children go blind, their world gets lonelier and darker. And so do their lives. Unable to go to school, they face a life of poverty and loneliness. It's heartbreaking. But the truth is, many of these children don't have to go blind. You can help make sure they get the simple treatments that will let them see again, that will give them their lives back. All you have to do is call 0800 038 1632 or text C1 to 7007 and give just £2 a month now. With your help, children can get the operations they desperately need. You can help provide medicines that fight painful infections. And you can help ensure children are given regular checkups before they start to go blind. Please call Sightsavers on 0800 038 1632 or text C1 to 7007 and give just £2 a month today. Your gift will mean a child can do something as wonderful as read again. Please help give Enoch his sight back. Please help give him his life back. Thank you. Welcome back, and it's Chelsea then who get us away at the start of the second half. They, of course, will now be facing this very strong breeze. But they're a goal to the good, scored by John Hollins. Against the Palace side, they've taken only three points in their last seven games. And indeed, have only scored three in their last six games. So, uh, the omens at the moment, none too good for Crystal Palace. Garland trying to run inside the fullback there, and Blythe, a good piece of interception there by Mel Blythe. Tambling, and Hudson in very quickly. Blythe, who looked as though he took a knock there as well, and now straight to Osgood. A little flick wide there towards Webb. 
and off Payne and into touch for another Chelsea throw. Hudson. Deep cross there towards Odds. Good again. Winning it in the air. Cook going in. And now Webb going in. Across the goal again. Osgood going in. And finally Wall getting it away. Hudson couldn't get his shot in, but it ricochets to Garland. Another cross into that Crystal Palace area. Webb on the far side. Not able to keep it in. And a goal kick to Palace. The rain has stopped. The wind has dropped. A lot better now to play football in. Harris. And Cook. A little flick on to Webb. Cook again. Hudson. Oh, a nice piece of play there by Chelsea. Cook lining one up. And Hudson complained to the referee that uh, Cook was barged off the ball by Blythe. But the referee saying it was shoulder to shoulder but a really brilliant one-two there between Hudson and uh, Cook. And so it's uh, Chelsea's corner, Alan Hudson to take it. At the near post is big John Dempsey, the number five. Webb is in there too. Oscar on the far side. Webb uh, was nodded off his head by Bly. Mulligan trying to line it up. Flicked in again, and a punch this time by Jackson, who was left alone there by the rest of the defence to face Webb. Boyle to Hudson. And that'll be a Crystal Palace throw. Chelsea looking far more incisive in this second half than they did in the first when they looked so lackadaisical, so leisurely in all that they were doing. But it could well be that uh, Dave Sexton, their manager, had a right girl at half time to lift the pace in this Chelsea side. And now Willie Wallace. Plenty of Palace players are up now. Wallace dispossessed by Hollins. Good bit of tackling back by the Chelsea skipper there. And not content with that. Hollins now leading the attack down the right. Garland, though, inside to Cook. Turn on again for Garland. And across that goal! Oh, and just left wide by Payne. But a really brilliant sweeping Chelsea move. Consolation there from Payne from his goalkeeper, John Jackson. Payne affording a little smile there. His heart going pitter patter. Very nearly putting it into his own goal. And Cook with a corner now for Chelsea. Oh, and he again didn't get a hand to that quite, Jackson. But Taylor taking it away. Wallace. Much better second half now. Keller. Taylor. Goodwin. And Tamling was almost in behind that defence. It needed ball. Well, now Tamling has got in behind that defence. But he couldn't quite turn quickly enough with it. Now he'd love to score one here. Boyle. Webb coming for it. Hudson. Played there for Charlie Cook. Prepared to attack Payne this time. Payne got himself just a little bit of breathing space. Hudson turned again towards Osgood and he tried to turn it down for Blythe and Blythe kept his head. And foul by Ozzy on Jackson. David Payne. Wallace turned off for Craven. Oh, he went through Hudson well there. Taylor. Good win now for Wallace. Can he make this one count? And it's a corner. It'll be Wallace to take the corner. Kellard already in the picture there for Crystal Palace. Boyle at the near post. Wallace then with the corner. Deeper one again. Blythe was in there. He managed to get a touch to it. And ahead of that one, McCormick over his own head. And Bonetti with his fist. And Craven almost got there again. Osgood right in there and the whistle is gone. 
Mulligan. Tambling winning it. And Harris. Blythe. And Harris again. Colliding with Kellard. Garland right back. Good piece of play by Chris Garland there. Now with Hudson. For Chelsea. Good, strong, aggressive run there by Hudson. And a little flick that finds Osgood. Turned in now towards David Webb. But a little too ambitious. Ball won't go out of play. Finally forcing Payne, in fact, to turn it upfield. And straight to John Boyle. Towards Osgood again. But uh, Wall getting in this time. Hudson back to Mulligan. On again for Webb to go in. And Tamling right back. Kellard, Wall. Palace's throw. Wallace, Taylor. And away goes Kramer, but it may be too far for him, it is. The idea was a good one, and it was a good idea in the first place for Craven to let it run. Perhaps to snap it back from the byline, he had Goodwin in the middle waiting for it. Now Webb, a touch off to Hudson. And now for Cook. A low one this time towards Garland, and towards Webb! And he had time to beat Garland! when it came across low from Cook couldn't make it count but Garland could goal number four for Chris Garland indeed he hadn't scored since that memorable goal against Spurs in the semi-final of the League Cup but that makes it now 2-0 for Chelsea and really puts Palace in the most awful trouble skipper Johnny Hollins Hudson fighting off all comers and finding Hollins and now to Boyle in turn to Charlie Cook Boyle again Hudson couldn't uh, make contact with it and it's uh, John Craven for Paris Sammy Goodwin Certainly nobody very much more depressed, I would think, in this Stamford Bridge ground today than uh, Crystal Palace manager Bert Head on the left there. So a free kick now to Palace. Bobby Tamling with it in a deep one towards McCormick, who'd gone up. Wall, who'd gone up as well. Couldn't keep it in. So Chelsea's goal kick. Taylor and Payne. Taylor a good win again this time for Craven played on for David Payne and Boyle coming in and a corner so Bonetti eyes everywhere looking to pick up the yellow shirts of Crystal Palace players John Boyle at the near post Harris there too and tambling with the corner. Curling in again and deep. The Cormick was right in there. Blind. Turning it back again. Wallace. Oh, we found a nice little angle there, Wallace. And off Dempsey. And behind again for another corner to Crystal Palace. Willie Wallace is going to take this one. A lower one. A back heel there. Fly, then he makes it count. Well, fly. Well, there haven't been many smiles for Palace this season. Fly, a lovely smile and a fine goal. 
to give Palace a little bit of hope. Really hammered that one in. So now with 10 minutes left, Palace are given something to fight for. Only Blythe's second goal of the season. And now Mulligan. Wall. Wall tripped there by Garland as he tried to get away. Free kick to Palace. Now they've really got to summon up everything for a big effort in the 10 minutes or so that remain. Hudson. And now Cook. Boyle. again and Taylor another great little scrapper in the middle but that time losing out to Webb Collins forward to Osgood Cook Hudson played again there behind in fact for the corner by David Payne Chelsea's corner Eight minutes now to go. Dempsey going up towards the far side of that uh, Crystal Palace penalty area. Cook again to take the corner for Chelsea. For Taylor to nod it down, but only as far as Cook. Inside for Hollins. Osgood. Osgood! Oh, just wide with a curler! He measured that with ice-cool efficiency, hit it with the inside of his boot, curling all the way, and only fractionally beyond that far post of John Jackson's. Craven, but it stands still at 2-1, and Palace are still in the fight. Oh, spinning the defence there nicely to find Sammy Goodwin. Across there as Taylor goes in, and Wallace was trying to make a touch with it. Webb nodding it on, McCormick now, Palace piling men forward, Taylor, oh and they misread each other's thoughts, and Oscar and Taylor having a right old barging contest, and the book is coming out, and it's going to be Oscar's name I think that goes in, well there was a fair old barging contest there, and referee Wallace taking the name of Peter Oscar, name isn't as long as all that but uh, Osgood's name goes in the book still writing and it's going to be McCormick to take the free kick for Crystal Palace oh they jumped over that together almost Braver and a free kick given to Crystal Palace no it's the final whistle a little under time play but uh, a few seconds but in fact it's defeat for Crystal Palace that could be a crucial one and a victory their fourth in succession goals by Johnny Hollins in the first place on the right for Chelsea and a second one by Chris Garland for Chelsea with Mel Blythe pulling one back to give Palace a little hope that didn't materialize number six Mel Blythe and so Chelsea go towards being London's top club which they want as a passport to Europe next year and Crystal Palace in dire trouble at the foot of the table the final score then at Stamford Bridge is Chelsea 2 Crystal Palace 1 In 1990, Chelsea travelled north to take on a Manchester United team without the injured Brian Robson, who celebrated 10 years at Old Trafford just days before, but it was still a daunting task. Commentary comes from Ian St John and Alan Parry. The referee today, Mr Jim Ashworth of Leicester. 
gets the action underway with Chelsea all in blue attacking from right to left in this first half another big crowd at Old Trafford where the average this season is over 45,000 Dave Besson back in goal after missing four games with a broken finger over Jury's head and Phelan with the first challenge in midfield for United Irwin getting it on to Hughes and Gareth Hall somewhat clumsily helped it back to Dave Besson Gareth Hall the Welsh international and this Chelsea team today full of teenagers and other youngsters around 20 21 years old over the head of one of the teenagers Stewart on the far side in midfield for Manchester United the captain Webb this is Pallister Have a look at today's substitutes Lee Martin and Lee Sharp for Manchester United, Kevin Wilson and David Lee for Chelsea. On Cow's clearance, but the referee will hold up play here for an injury. Didn't quite see what happened there, uh, Ian, did you? No, actually, I didn't. I think it was just a clash of heads. Oh, no. <coughs> it's a real test for this uh, young Chelsea team today. Bobby Campbell was saying uh, to me before the game about the youngsters, he said, you'll never know how good they are until you throw them in. Well, he's thrown them in at Old Trafford and you can't really find a more difficult place to go and play your game. So we'll find out something about them today. Bobby Campbell, a man under pressure today following some newspaper reports that his job is in jeopardy. Hughes. Townsend's tackle and Hughes flew in for the second challenge. But he'd already earned the free kick. Townsend fouling him. Pallister with the kick for United. McLaren drifted wide of the Chelsea defence, but the ball was never going to be good enough to find him. I don't know if United have been practicing and training, hitting uh, slanting balls like that, but uh, that's the second one that the Pitt has just gone straight into the crowd. Obviously, Bobby wants his lads to start pushing up a bit onto the halfway line, try and play United in their half of the field. But they're going forward now with Townsend in possession. Wise. And it's sliced off Pallister for an own goal. Jury went in with Pallister, and Bobby Campbell doesn't really care whose shin it went off because Chelsea have taken the lead. 15 minutes gone, and Manchester United rocked. It looked so innocuous. Now, did Jury get the touch or did it come off Pallister? Either way. Well, it looked to me as if it came off uh, Pallister and he just slice at it here. Perhaps this picture will show, yes. I don't think Jury got a touch, but he's claiming it. <laughs> but I think it was Pallister's goal. The important thing is, the scoreline reads Manchester United nil, Chelsea won. And Chelsea, in what's been a traumatic week for them, fielding an inexperienced side, have rocked Old Trafford by taking an early lead. Pallister's gone forward trying to make amends already from the free kick. But Pheasant is six feet four and will take those all day long. Well, Gary Pallister would have been disappointed either way because uh, Jury certainly sneaked in ahead of him for that Dennis Wise cross. It really came from nothing, didn't it? I think that's going to be quite a battle today with uh, Jury and Dixon against the two centre house Pallister and Bruce because I think that's an area that's going to be crucial for this game. And at the present time, the two Chelsea boys look as if uh, they may just have the edge. Meanwhile, Hughes trying to put pressure on Moncal at the other end. And Best of the game had to come a long way from goal to deal with it. Erwin getting there ahead of Jury. Well, Chelsea's record away from home this season is quite appalling. They've only taken one point out of a possible 18 away from Stamford Bridge. That was in a three-all draw against Southampton at the Dell. So they would not have expected, I'm sure, to find themselves in front here, especially in their present situation. The 
Claire turning it on. Hughes. Irwin. Good interception by young Damien Matthew. Thielen. Irwin. Ince. Townsend ran straight into him. Manchester United have the free kick. Well, the Chelsea fans who haven't seen much joy on their travels away from London this season are really making a lot of noise now, but Manchester United are in a threatening position here. Webb, Blackmore and Ince, the three United players over the ball for this free kick. Webb who takes it, and doesn't dealt with that quite contemptuously. No, not quite the pace required to beat Dave Besson from that distance. I would have thought uh, Clayton Blackmore might have had a bang because he, he's really got a hard shot. Bruce up well, but it breaks for Stewart. Nice skill from the youngster. Townsend. Lusso. Into Jury. He tried to chest it down into the path of Kelly Dixon ahead of him. Moncow. Oh, nice play by Lusso. And not a bad ball either. Bruce just about cut it out as Dixon was threatening to run onto it. Here's Phelan straight away under pressure. And Townsend's done brilliantly for Chelsea here. He's going alone. Oh, what a marvellous goal! Andy Townsend scores a beauty! No smiles from Bobby Campbell, but inside, he will be feeling as happy as these Chelsea supporters. Two goals in less than five minutes for Chelsea. Andy Townsend's first lead goal as a Chelsea player, and it could hardly have been more special. He had no support, he had to go all the way himself, and he did so superbly. Well, I thought the goalkeeper went down a little bit early there, Alan. As you say, he was waiting for the support coming up, and really had the goalkeeper stayed in his feet, there was no space there for him. What an upset in the making here, and Dixon trying to give United further problems, but Pallister defended stoutly then. Two goals in four minutes. Manchester United nil. Chelsea two. Manchester United, seven matches without defeat. Only one defeat in their last ten games. And they've won four of their last five. Absolutely rocked here. Against all the odds. Hughes under pressure. On Cow brushed him aside. And the referees give him the free kick against the Chelsea defender. Mr. and Bruce, who both are very dangerous in free kicks, will be the men that Chelsea will have to watch here. Wallace and Blackmore over the ball. It's Wallace who curls it in, headed away by Hall. Wallace can try again. Phelan. Irwin. Not a bad ball for Inns, but Moncow read it well. Irwin again. Useful cross that. Well met by Cundy. It's Bruce. Thielen heading it on. Moncow in there quickly again. And the so clears virtually onto our camera gantry here. United keep the pressure on, and they've got to maintain this now. Two goals down in the first 19 minutes. And they've got another free kick. Irwin takes it. 
takes it, looking for Pallister, and he met it firmly enough. And Pleasant did well to punch that clear. He could never have reached it to catch it. The first corner of the game. Pallister and Bruce both forward again for the kick. Bruce! Well blocked, Bruce again, and it took a deflection for another corner. Well, Steve Bruce has scored three goals in his last five games and six altogether for United this season. He is so dangerous in these situations. Well, you feel that United have to get a goal now, Alan, because they're putting uh, Chelsea under quite a bit of pressure here. They need to get one. Let's see if they can. Pallister climbing high again. Oh, and somehow Wallace got there. And the smallest man in the penalty area got the head of the counted. raining goals at Old Trafford now three goals in the space of eight minutes and little Danny Wallace getting Manchester United back into the picture after the mighty figure of Pallister had caused the danger what a good header though by Wallace I think Dave Besson might have been a little unhappy he didn't get uh, both hands to the ball and even punched it away got a bit of distance on it Side. It was a foul, in fact, uh, on Hughes. Or was it? In fact, I think he's given the offside. Yes, I think he did. <laughs> Mark Hughes thought, as I did, that uh, the decision had gone his way. I think that could truthfully be called a look of disbelief from the Manchester United man. Fury telling Hall exactly where he wants it played. It goes in deeper, though, towards Dixon. Oh! That was a marvellous save by Seeley, and very nearly a spectacular third goal for Chelsea. Seeley's furious, but it seemed no one jumped with Dixon. Well, the two centre-halves uh, are arguing with each other because Kerry Dixon got in between them there, and the header just was, may just have hit the bar. Irwin, Brian McClare. First time he's had the chance to take the so on. He needed help from Irwin, though. Stewart doing well, but losing out eventually. United's pressure in the last few seconds here. Pants as McClare kicks angrily at Graham Stewart, who had already conceded the free kick for the foul on the United number nine. Bruce's kick, Moncow again gets it clear, Ince will get it back from McClure. Webb, good play by Webb, excellent play from Webb, Moncow in there with Besson, and the Chelsea goalkeeper came to claim the ball when he really had to then. And that in fact, is the end of the first half, an absorbing half that started quietly. Pallister's own goal giving Chelsea a surprise lead, which they added to with an excellent solo effort by Andy Townsend. Manchester United's pressure paid off when Danny Wallace pulled one back for them. <laughs> quiet today actually but this is like mm -hmm. the main production hub accounts are down here and I'll probably introduce you to a few of them see you we normally like fist bump and stuff yeah sure you do I've stayed at his house should we try to finish the tour yeah one day, we'll all pass away. But if you can't afford to pay for your funeral, who will? If your loved ones have to find the money for your funeral and other related costs, they could be looking for over five and a half thousand pounds. Nobody wants to leave their family with that kind of debt at such a distressing time. So, why not do what I did? I took out a funeral protection promise from Promise Life to help protect my family from high funeral costs and other bills. If something happens to me, they'll get a fast payout of up to £20,000. 
so at least they won't have to worry about paying for my funeral. And depending on what level of cover you want, protection could cost from as little as £1.81 a week. I've paid more than that for a cup of coffee. So make a promise to help protect your family from the high cost of a funeral and other bills. Call Promise Life today on 0800 907 0797. Martin is feeling a little flat. His credit score only gives a one-dimensional view of his financial position. He can't see what lenders see. Check My File is different. It's the only report that uses data from four credit agencies, not just one. It's the most comprehensive in the UK, giving you a more realistic view of your situation. Try it free for 30 days and see the bigger picture. Visit checkmyfile.com. Are you weighed down by a poor credit record, finding it difficult to borrow money? Everyday Loans could help. They offer a range of loans from £1,000 to £15,000. They're flexible as well as being friendly and approachable. Apply online and they'll give you a conditional decision in minutes. That's right. With Everyday Loans, it is simple and straightforward. Representative APR 93.6%. Apply now at everydayloans.co.uk and discover your credit future, not your credit history. Welcome back to Old Trafford, the team's back on the field for the start of the second half and during the interval both managers have decided to make substitutions. Lee Sharp has come on for Manchester United in place of Mickey Phelan, the England under-21 international who is a natural left-sided player, can play either left-back or left-wing. And for Chelsea, Kevin Wilson has taken the place of Gordon Jury, Kevin Wilson, Chelsea's leading scorer this season. It'll be interesting to see exactly uh, whether they're tactical moves or whether they were enforced by injury. Wise is possessed, now Ince for United. Good strong run this by Ince. Was he fouled? He was. He runs well with the ball, Paul Ince. One of his strong points, Alan. Very difficult to knock off it. They have an injured player, I think. Uh, the referee is uh, not going to allow the free kick to be taken, I think, until Wise gets treatment from the Chelsea physio, Bob Ward. He went down in the earlier attack. He's had the official attendance here, 37,836. Well up for the high average at Old Trafford this season. Gates, something like 6,000 up on last season's crowds and they've been well served here at Old Trafford as well with nine of the 11 matches played here seeing a Manchester United victory I think I'm right in saying that's the biggest gate of the weekend Alan is it? Uh, Liverpool had about the same the match I saw yesterday against Manchester City but there'd only be a few in it free kick it is to Manchester United Four men in the Chelsea wall. Blackmore sets it up for Ince to hit it. Good save by Besson. And Paul Ince still hasn't managed to score a goal at Old Trafford. He's only got two. They both came at Portsmouth in a League Cup tie. Just two goals in 53 appearances for Manchester United. He'll not get closer than that, though. Webb for Manchester United. Oh, that's a good interception by young Matthew done really well oh look at that what a good effort by Damien Matthew he would have enjoyed that Bobby Campbell he's got great faith in these two youngsters Saido Ouija as they all nickname him yes his manager would be happy with that one he won the tackle well took it forward and showed a lot of confidence by having a look and thinking well I may as well have a pop at goal from here wins it back and Dixon's onside this time and he made the mistake Pallister for United bit of a clumsy ball easy for Townsend to intercept Bruce now for Manchester United they're still 2-1 behind United have got very ragged again Alan haven't they they've 
in that early pressure in the second half, they looked as if they make it back on terms, but they've gone a little bit ragged over the last 10 minutes. Great ball, though, from Ends to Wallace. And Hughes wants it played first time into the box. And Hughes gets the ball he wanted and equalises for Manchester United. Brilliant cross by Wallace. There seems an awful lot of room for me, Alan, down that uh, left side of, uh, United, of Chelsea defence. Danny Wallace had uh, all the time in the world to control it, have a look. And we'll see, could Dave Besson have got it? Just eluded him. So, back on terms, we've got a game on our hands here now. Can well, United go ahead and win it? Hughes was calling for that cross the moment the ball was played out to the right, and he met it brilliantly for his fifth goal of the season. Sixth in the table, Manchester United. 20 points from 13 games, but under pressure here from young Stewart. Wilson, back it goes to Stewart. He run into Webb, and the referee has given a penalty. Webb can't believe it, and I'm not certain either. But anyway, the referee, Mr. Ashworth, was certain, and young Graham Stewart has earned Chelsea a lifeline with this penalty. Well, was he going to cross his path? Was that a deliberate foul by Webb? I think that was a definite penalty. I mean, <laughs> Stewart's got the ball, he's running with it, and he's he just knocked over, he's bowled over. It's got to be a penalty kick. Well, Dennis Wise has scored four times from the spot already this season, and Chelsea would be very grateful that Bobby Campbell decided to leave him in the side. He's an expert penalty taker. His place was under threat. You shouldn't have said he was an expert penalty taker, Alan. Why not? That was expert enough. And Chelsea are in front again. You can see the beads of perspiration even on a cold day on Bobby Campbell's face. What a match this is. 77 minutes gone. Well, it wasn't the greatest of penalty kicks. He almost hit it straight. And funnily enough, uh, I seen him taking a penalty kick the other week there uh, on video, and he hits it exactly like that. So almost straight in the middle of the goal. The ones that go in <laughs> are good enough, aren't they, though? Oh, yeah. And Chelsea are leading by three goals to two here. One nil up, two nil up. United came back to 2-1. Then they made it 2-2. But Chelsea has forged into the lead again. Pallister's header. It's Webb. Oh, it went across everybody. Wallace. And Hall heads it behind for a corner. Amazing that when Webb threaded it through then, nobody was there to get a touch. That's all he would have needed. Quickly back from McClare to Webb. Alistair getting up high again, but it's gone behind, and Chelsea have a goal kick. That looks as if that may be the last chance of the game for Manchester United. Gary Pallister just getting his head to the ball, but flicking off and, and going wide for the dead ball. Moncow pumps it forward one last time. Dixon's little header on. Bruce is quicker than Wilson this time. They're into the time being added for stoppages. Another headed clearance from Moncow. Bruce for Manchester United. He's got to get it forward quickly here. Charge down by Wilson. Good enough as far as Chelsea are concerned, I'm sure. As long as United are in this half of the field, Chelsea will be more than happy. And that's the final whistle. And Chelsea have indeed earned a famous victory today. Dennis Wise's penalty kick proving to be the winning goal in a splendid match of five goals. 
Chelsea manager Bobby Campbell is down on the touchline now with Gary Newbon. <laughs> well, what sort of turning point is that for you, Bobby, your first away league win of the season? Well, it's, it's been coming for a long time. We've played quite well away from home, but we haven't been getting the results. Today, we went under siege a bit. We've got a lot of kids in. They've done magnificent. They've done the club proud, and I'm very pleased with them. Thank you very much. You See you later. Hang on a second. Hang no. on a second. You must have been a bit worried. Uh, when I'm never worried. Never worried. worried. See you later. Let me just ask you one other thing, Bobby. Just one question more. Yeah, sure. Um, you're, you'll be li nice to know that your chairman confirmed that your job's not in jeopardy. Well, that's very nice of them. Thank you very much. Were you concerned about not that? Not at all. Okay. See you later. Well so a good day all round for Bobby Campbell. More than a match for Manchester United and reporter Gary Newborn. <laughs> Clive Walker had been making his mark in 1978, two goals in two games before this FA Cup tie with Liverpool. But how would he measure up against Kenny Dalglish and co? Commentary comes from Brian Moore. The referee is Pat Partridge, who comes from Durham. And now let's get on with the Cup tie action. So what noise. And what a game in prospect. As Liverpool attacked the goal to our right, those of you watching in black and white, we apologise. There's a bit of a clash in terms of colours. Liverpool in all red, of course. Chelsea in all blue. But Chelsea have the white socks. Emlyn Hughes and Steve Wicks. Charlie Cook with a touch for Lewington. And Hughes playing it safe. And so it's Chelsea's throw. Back for Graham Wilkins. Bill Garner could be very useful in the air, as he always is, but it's Kennedy getting this one away now for Liverpool. And John Sparrow here for Chelsea. Attacked by Dalglish, but Sparrow finding Garner. Back for Wicks. Harris. Cut out by Neil. Now Britain. Nice ball here for Walker. Flick through nicely for Garner. Play back again for Walker. Good move this by Chelsea. And Hughes cutting it out, but not very well. And here's Dalglish. Oh. Almost gave that away to Lewington. And in the end, it's uh, Callaghan who turns it back to help Liverpool recover a little bit of composure as he gets the ball to Clements. Johnson just winning that in the air. Dalglish with uh, Harris's boots about him. Chelsea getting possession with Lewington. Hughes. Dalglish. Touched by Johnson. Harris got in the way that time. Cook back to Sparrow. Lewington turning well. Sparrow. Walker. Oh, a nice close up of the way he beat to Joey Jones there. But then he ran straight into uh, Phil Thompson. Cook. Now, can Walker do something this time? Crossed in once more towards Tommy Langley. That time, Emlyn Hughes was there. Garner just sticking out a leg and finding Graham Wilkins. Controlled nicely there by Lewington. Nice play by him. Garner played in there, but Phil Thompson was there for Liverpool, and here's Dalglish. Cut out by Wicks. Both defences at the moment playing without any shred of nerves at all. Sparrow to Walker. Langley... Yeah, uh, Thompson very hard in on Langley there after that ball had gone, but the referee allowed it to go with Chelsea in possession. But he certainly noted the point. Nice play by Lewington. Here's Cook. Measuring up that cross to Britain on the far side. If only he could grow a few inches for Chelsea. And it's Highway who got it away. Harris with the header. Thompson in quickly for Liverpool. Graham Wilkins and nobody up there for that one.
long clearance by Ray Clements. Wicks off balance. Harris putting it sideways here for Sparrow. Jerry Jones. Oh, he's given it to Langley. Garner's coming up for Langley in the middle. And Hughes had to stretch out and just didn't get it. But Garner had committed himself. And the fleeting chance for Chelsea didn't quite come their way. Free kick, a foul by Lewington. Well, Langley got that across beautifully. Hughes was really stretching there. And Garner just couldn't quite get the touch that Chelsea wanted. Kennedy. Bill Neal right up there with the attack. Here's Harris. Kennedy again. Callaghan looking up, looking around. Who's on? Two Chelsea defenders going for that one. And it'll come to Fairclough. And a shot on the turn. Well saved by Peter Benetti. And Graham Wilkins got it away. Two Chelsea defenders going for that high ball. And when it fell, Fairclough had a couple of yards. He turned superbly. And Peter Benetti was equal to the shot. Britain. Cook. Langley. Britain. Cook. Britain again. Oh, and Langley in there now. Well, that's almost a collector's item to find such confusion in that uh, Liverpool defence as that. Hughes and Neil didn't read each other at all, and Langley was behind them in a flash. It was never an easy angle, and over the top it went. Now Sparrow. Garner. All on a play. Chelsea's throw. Clive Walker to Bill Garner. Really does look lively, Walker. Driving the ball, oh, will go! Pivots puts his head in his hands, and Clive Walker has scored for Chelsea. That's the man who's at fault, Ray Clements, and that's the man who scored it, Clive Walker. What a shot, and what delight, and what dejection. Walker let that one go, and Clement should have had it. But it went swimming inside that post to put Chelsea into the lead, 16 minutes gone. Three successive games that Clive Walker has scored, and what a goal to set this cup tie alight now. Here's Garner. But a mistake by Ray Clements. And by the way, Ray Clements held his head in his hands as that ball hit the back of the net. Ray knows that that's down to him. So a free kick now for Chelsea. Walker. And Thompson away. Here's Harris, and now Graham Wilkins. Kennedy finding highway. Harris away. So really the fight is on now. Garner, and Walker's away again. Is this going to be number two? Oh, brilliant save, and it went wide. Well, Clements redeemed himself there. Walker was through brilliantly. Clements came out just enough. Made himself big, knocked it away. And the rebound took it off a Liverpool player behind for the corner. So there's that Liverpool goal mouth. And that's where the action is at the moment. As Ian Britton now takes the corner for Chelsea. Steve Wicks there with a header, a safe gather for Ray Clements. Well, one manager 
Ken Shillito right at the back there in the sheepskin in the centre there with Ron Seward on the left. A happy afternoon so far for Chelsea. Lewington. Kennedy. Callaghan. Clough. Oh, he's got to the byline. Could be trouble for Chelsea here. Highway! Well, they were all over the place there. Peter Benetti couldn't have done anything about it if Highway had caught that properly. As Fairclough beat his man and took it to the byline, pulled it back, and Highway didn't begin to catch it properly. And wide of the far post. Looks as though Chelsea might be making a substitution, and I wonder if that's why uh, Ken Shelito has come down. Charlie Cook looking across towards that bench, in fact, where Finiston's almost ready to come on. David Fairclough. Johnson for Liverpool. Callaghan. Neil. Highway, a bit of space there for Highway to get his shot in, and in the end it was Rex who came in quickly and closed down that space. Neil now to Highway. That was a dangerous thing for Chelsea to allow Highway quite as much room as that. Neil. Kennedy. Onto the left foot. Wide of the goal. And Chelsea are going to bring on Steve Finiston now. His first game since the start of the season almost. He's had a long spell out with injury. And it's Charlie Cook who's going off. Finiston, a prolific scorer last season as Chelsea came from the second into the first. Now, what sort of readjustment is that going to make? Hughes, oh, lost it to Langley. Played back this time for Finiston, and he didn't finish that the way he might have done. Britain has charged away. And here's Sparrow. Langley again. A handball, a good advantage played. Langley with a shot and Clements with a save. Two good pieces of play by Langley then. First the cross that Finiston didn't really uh, finish the way he might have done, but he's only just come on as a sub. And then the shot by Langley saved by Clements. And now one at the other end, saved by Benetti from Kennedy, and do they get a corner or do they get a goal kick? A goal kick it is. And Benetti is injured. That raking shot from Ray Kennedy. And Benetti saving it, and then getting injured as he attempted to save the second time. spit on the hands and let's get on with it as Graham Wilkins now takes this goal kick or rather it was a free kick here's Finiston played on now for Langley I say Langley and Walker between them have uh, really given Liverpool one or two worry lines and here's Walker cross coming in towards Finiston and towards Garner and now Lewington, trying to force his way through, but the, <laughs> the whistle had gone. There had been a use of the hands by Ray Lewington, and very cute, humanly, he takes the referee's decision. And Liverpool get a free kick. Nice touch. So at the moment, this superlative uh, Liverpool machine has got bit of grit in the machinery at the moment. Chelsea have battled and battled. And just about deserve this lead that they look likely to take into the half-time interval. Dalglish with a touch. But will they go in with the lead? Kennedy! And Benetti, a tremendous save. Kennedy got loose behind that Chelsea defence onto his favourite left foot. What a whack and what a save. 
so a corner for Liverpool a little word of warning there for Chelsea really must concentrate the full 90 minutes and Bonetti with a good safe catch drawing the applause from the shed putting it away referee looking at his watch again as you can see a little bit of injury time but not much and indeed there is the half time whistle that brilliant goalkeeper Ray Clements will be the first to admit I'm sure that it was his mistake that let Chelsea and Clive Walker in with the goal that separated the two sides Chelsea very lively indeed Walker amongst them but also Tommy Langley number nine who's got in behind that defence so effectively as well so Chelsea just about deserving it, but Liverpool, as we saw right at the death there, looking very formidable still, and a lot to come yet from this cup tie. A half-time score then at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 1, Liverpool 0. We'll be right back with the second half. You know what they say, Marquez? Tidy workspace, tidy mind. We are in for a cracker today. Next up for all you serious thrill seekers, the Grand Prix of Japan. Take the guesswork out of finding credit cards and loans with Experian Credit Matcher. It gives you free access to your Experian Credit Score forever. And can help you find the credit cards and loans you're more likely to be accepted for. Take the guesswork out at experian.co.uk. The boil is on the blink again. What am I going to do? Quick, quick, think. Restore some order. Find out more at quickquid.co.uk. Did you know that you don't have to go to a pharmacy or your doctor for your NHS repeat prescriptions? Instead, you can now have them delivered straight to your door. Register for the service by phone or online at the addresses on screen. Pharmacy to you requests your prescription from your doctor, which is sent to them electronically. Their pharmacists check and dispense your prescription before it's delivered at no cost to your address by the Royal Mail. Simple, effective and so easy to arrange. Register now by phone or at pharmacy to youcouk forward slash NHS. Unlike some funeral plan providers, Co-op Funeral Care cover all the costs of your chosen burial or cremation plan. Because we believe your loved ones shouldn't be left any surprise bills. One day, all this would be yours. To leave them something they will appreciate, talk to us about our fully guaranteed funeral plans, which start from just 2995. Co-op Funeral Care, here for you when you need us most. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge for the second half of this third round cup tie. Chelsea now attacking the goal to our right. That one goal up. The man who scored it is on the ball at the moment, Clive Walker. Langley trying to play it back to him and Joey Jones hacking that one away for Liverpool. Liverpool who came here having lost only one of their last 13. Chelsea faltering, if anything, a little bit at home. They've won only one of their last five here. But they are nicely placed at the moment. Although in that uh, quarter of an hour leading up to half-time, you got the impression that Liverpool were really getting down to the job in hand with growing efficiency. Callaghan losing it. Walker brought down by Jerry Jones. The referee calling Jerry Jones to him. impression that uh, Clive Walker may have made a little bit of a meal of that but it's quite clear what Pat Partridge is saying cut that out it's moustache coming on well Joey Jones Walker chipping that free kick in Garner's right in there now can this be another goal finish them Be 
Sweden for the second time, Ray Clements, to a crowded goal mouth, and he couldn't see much of it. But as that ball came to Steve Finiston, he caught it well. Into the corner of the net, and Liverpool are two down. But for the home fans, what is more important, Chelsea are two up. Harris, now it's a real job for Liverpool. I suspect they came fearful that Chelsea might find it too hard a job today with a weakened side. They must be overjoyed with what's happened in front of them today. 2-0 up. Now it's with Britain. Back it comes again to Britain. And Phil Neal playing it back for Langley. And it's another one. No chance for that. Unbelievable. Tommy Langley. And what opportunism as well. Clements sold desperately short by that back pass from Phil Neal. Langley was onto it. The angle was difficult. But Langley mastered it well. Chelsea 3, Liverpool 0, with two of the goals coming in the first seven minutes of the second half. Tommy Langley beating Ray Clements. What a cup tie, and what a surprise. So Bob Paisley down on the bench in the centre there, Joe Fagan on the right, and there are some worried men there. Alan Hansen is a substitute. He's a defender when really what they need now is a man to score goals. What a sight at Stamford Bridge. They've got their biggest crowd of the season here, and that's when you want to turn on your best performance, and Chelsea have done just that. Played inside by Garner. And that time, Clemens had to save again from Finiston. So the photographer's moving. That's significant from uh, behind the Chelsea goal to behind the Liverpool goal. They, as two of them, I seem, come to this end. They obviously feel that this is where the action is going to be from now on. Sparrow. Kennedy right in there. Johnson playing it for... Kennedy again, Kenny Dalglish trying to get it through there, and it comes through for Johnson, and they've got one back. David Johnson, the scorer for Liverpool, and who knows what can happen. It was a battle for Kenny Dalglish there, odds of about three to one against him, but somehow he got the ball through, David Johnson was there, neatly sidestepped the keeper, and that's one for Liverpool. Chelsea 3, Liverpool 1, David Johnson, only his second of the season. The first one came last week. Now Walker. Pass Joey Jones, what about that for acceleration? And Jones getting it away to Callaghan. Lewington. And Thompson now for Neal. Played on now for Highway. There's Phil Neal. Highway. Kennedy. Now Hughes. Thompson in there again. Harris getting it away. Dalglish, neat turn. Kennedy played back for Johnson and coming back well now Liverpool here's Highway calling for a good cross which is what it's got my word right across there beyond both Joey Jones and Dalglish and here's Garner for Chelsea good cross by Steve Highway got dangerously to the byline again Sparrow.
Ghana, Britain. Brought down, no free kick though. That passage indicating that Britain had dived. Sparrow for Chelsea. And a Chelsea throw. John Sparrow with it. Steve Finiston. Tommy Langley. Oh, Finiston couldn't quite get it on his chest, but uh, Britain might stop it going out. Finiston. Walker. Langley. Britain, keeping possession nicely, here's the cross towards Bill Garner, taking it nicely, and another one for Walker! The fourth one for Chelsea! What a remarkable cup tie! And again he has to pick the ball out of the net. And that was down to Bill Garner. As that long cross came in, Garner took that superbly on his chest. Great skill. And then had the good sense to play it short to Walker. And Walker's part in it was a formality. So uh, Clive Walker gets his second goal. And he'll be the first to admit that it was made by Bill Garner. Chelsea 4, Liverpool 1. In that bench... Ray Wilkins in the centre there. Well, even without him, they get four against Liverpool, and that's a surprise. Now Callum. Lewington having a tussle there. Finding his way out of it and finding Finiston. Langley. Finiston. Phil Neal there. But his shot was always going wide. I don't suppose Ray Clements has ever faced such a bombardment as he's facing now. Well, Liverpool now taking Joey Jones off. Jones going off, and Alan Hansen is now on. Well, he's fitted in very well into this Liverpool defence. Maybe he'll tighten things up a little bit, but it's three goals up the front that Liverpool want so badly at the moment. Now with Neil. Carrigan. Kennedy. It'll come for Neil. Tried to play that a little bit short, and it'll come to Delgleish now as he got the skill to beat off this Chelsea side with a little chip once more. Johnson on the far side, Bonetti out to challenge him, and a corner given. Johnson, in fact, claiming that he was impeded by the Chelsea keeper. But the most that Liverpool get out of this is a corner. So a corner it is, and Highway is the man to take it. Kennedy up again. Hansen in there too. Phil Thompson with that header. And Delvish has made it 4 2. Well, is there yet a chance for Liverpool as that corner from Highway came floating in? The big men got up, nodded it on its way, and Delvish was there to give that uh, clip just over the line. Chelsea 4, Liverpool 2. Chelsea bench, David Hay nearest the camera, Ray Wilkins next to him. Here's Garner. But he's happy just to take the ball to the uh, corner flag there. Hughes won't let him do that. And Emlyn, in fact, gets it away. Oh! And I 
don't know whether I don't think Garner in fact uh, contact to make contact there with Enon Hughes and I think the referee is quite clear in his own mind that uh, Enon's frustration is showing, showing through and that Bill Garner didn't make a contact there was certainly a bit of pushing and shoving there and the referee who has had a really immaculate game saw through it all He's having a word with them, I think, for the scuffling that went on before it. And then I think Emlyn Hughes, for reasons best known to himself, made it look as though he really had been poleaxed by Bill Garner. And he doesn't look too badly off now, does he? But Bill Garner's having a word with him, and Pat Partridge is saying you better cut that out as well. So there are the two of them. So the game goes on. And Chelsea fought to a head. Two goals separating the sides, and Liverpool, in the last analysis, might well say we gave one of them with the uh, goalkeeper, unlike him, making that mistake, and another with a bad back pass. The two goals that make the difference in the sides. We're into injury time. Liverpool's first FA Cup tie at Stamford Bridge. And the way it's gone, I'm sure they won't be too sorry if it's the last. 4-2 down, so little time left. Highway with this free kick for them. And Bonetti coming for it, punching it away. Emlyn Hughes whacking it back again. Knocked out once more by Chelsea, who pulled everybody back. Callaghan to Neil. A bad day for Liverpool, a brilliant one for Chelsea. But here's Highway, it's all over. And Chelsea are through to the fourth round. 4-2 winners. Clive Walker, the number 11, who got two of them. Steve Finiston and Tommy Langley, the other scorers for Chelsea. With David Johnson and Kenny Dalglish getting the two for Liverpool. And the crowd overjoyed with what they've seen. So Chelsea were through to round four of the FA Cup, but they'd eventually be knocked out of the competition in the fifth round by Leighton Orient. <laughs>